So here are five ways to decide whether or not you should stay an employee or be an entrepreneur. Let's get into this one. Hey y'all, this is Tiffany with Boss on a Budget. I help new and small nonprofits get up and running, but I also help people just launch successfully, whether that's a nonprofit or for-profit venture. I wanted to do this video because I feel like there's a lot of talk and chatter about, oh, being an entrepreneur, have your own business, but people are really not talking about <laughs> how hard it is. And it really takes a certain person to be able to become an entrepreneur. And when I say that, I mean a full-time entrepreneur. And it takes a certain person to be an employee. And a lot of those skills don't always transfer well. And also, sometimes it's okay if you want to be an employee. Like, I don't believe that people should have to be forced to have a business or be forced into certain things. Sometimes people are completely okay with working a job and retiring from a job and I there's no shade to any of those people for me personally I don't think that I could be happy or fulfilled unless I was doing something business wise that's just me but I also recognize that there are other people who are completely opposite and so I wanted to do a video to talk about how to decide if you're trying to figure out which works for you should you just stay on a job and just be good or should you really, really dip your toe into being an entrepreneur? And I'm sharing from my own personal experience. I was a full-time employee and have now officially transitioned to work for myself. I pay my own salary. And I want to talk about the transition period and what I had to realize of what it takes to be a full-time entrepreneur. This one's going to be good. I'm actually going to share five ways to decide which side you should land on. So the first thing you should think about if you're trying to decide whether or not you want to be an employee or a full-time entrepreneur is can you work without structure? Can you work without some kind of built-in accountability measure? And this is what I think is one of the hardest parts about being an entrepreneur. So before I transitioned to become full-time, I actually transitioned from a regular job to a job that was completely 100% remote. And that transition was hard because on my job, I was used to having the report to work at a certain time. I had lunch typically around a certain time and then it was time to clock out because I had to get in my car and go home. But when I was in the house, there was no structure. So I had to decide when to get up. I had to take a shower, put my clothes on. I had to decide when I was going to be working and when I wasn't, I had to decide when to log off and nobody had to decide that for me. And going straight into that with not having any guidance on that or anybody lording over me telling me, hey, clock in, clock out. It was very, very hard. It took me literally years to get into a good rhythm of a schedule. So I had to realize, yes, I need to wake up around the same time and be ready to report to work at a certain time. Yes, I absolutely need to shower and put work clothes on. Do not work in your pajamas. <laughs> That's something that I had to learn for myself that anytime I work in my pajamas, my day spirals and I'm just it just bleeds through everything else. So I need to have a structure and actually shower and put clothes on. I need to be clear about when it's time to sign off and what does that look like? Does that mean that I write notes to myself? Do I sign off on the computer? I think it's really helpful for you to have some kind of symbolic gesture, which indicates that your work day is over. Because if you don't do that, then your personal life and your business life will bleed into each other. I'm going to give a quick caveat here, though. As an entrepreneur, you don't typically work traditional hours. So there will be times where you're going to work on the weekends. There will be times where you're going to work after hours, but you have to decide for yourself, whatever your schedule is, whatever your structure is, that there has to be a structure because if you don't, it will completely burn you out. And I'm speaking from complete experience, if you don't know by now. So there has to be a line. You have to decide when you are working and when you're not, you have to set times in your schedule to say, okay, I'm not taking any meetings this day. As an employee, you have a built-in structure for that. As an employee, typically they'll tell you when to move, when not to move, or you know for yourself, well, I don't get paid to do that, so 
I'm stopping at this time, but as an entrepreneur, there are no lines unless you make them. You're setting the standard, you're setting the rules, and if you don't do that for yourself, you can get completely lost. So if you're the kind of person who needs structure and you need accountability and it's hard for you to do that for yourself, then you're gonna have a hard transition to be an entrepreneur. I'm not saying that that isn't possible though. You can put structures in place to create that accountability for you, but if you don't do it for yourself or if you can't work well without some kind of accountability, mm, it might be good to just stay an employee. Second thing you should think about when deciding which one is, are you willing to try new things? Usually when you are um, an employee, you work within a particular job description. You work within a certain box. And that's, there's no shade on that. It's just, you know, this is my job. This is what I do. This is what I'm known for. This is what I'm good at. And this is me. When you are an entrepreneur, you can have your lane and you can be good at certain things, but you are expected to do a lot of other things you may not like to do. You may feel uncomfortable doing. So all the admin pieces and the accounting and bookkeeping and stuff for your business, you may hate that kind of stuff, but you better be paying attention to that. You better have some kind of indication of what's going on with your finances and your taxes. Maybe you don't like marketing and you're not a person who likes to do sales. Well, if you're not paying attention to how you're marketed, your visibility, if you're not paying attention to sales and actually making sales and pitching, then you're not going to be successful in business. So that may not have been your lane. Like your lane is this is what I do. This is my expertise. I don't market. I don't do sales. But as an entrepreneur, you got to be everything. And especially in the beginning when you don't have staff, you have to be everything. You have to dip your toe into everything. And if you're the kind of person who does not like to try new things, who does not like to be pushed or stretched to do something different or new, if you're the kind of person that really craves that structure where it's like, I know what I do every day, I show up and do the same thing, that's just who I am, that helps me thrive, then you may wanna stay as an employee because as an entrepreneur, you're gonna be pushed every single day. And that pushing will push you forward. It will propel your business forward. If you're willing to be flexible, if you're willing to be open, it will benefit your business, but it doesn't feel good. So if you're the type of person who doesn't wanna dive into how to create a website or wanna learn about graphic design or the marketing piece of it all, if you don't wanna learn technology and things like that, you're gonna be behind. So that's another thing you need to think about in terms of deciding which way you wanna go. The third thing to consider when you're trying to figure out employee or entrepreneur is how well do you problem solve? So when a situation comes up, are you the person who's like, okay, let me think through a solution. Let's get through this. Or are you the person that's like, oh, let them handle it because that's not my job. <laughs> and honestly, there's no shade because whatever works for you, right? But if you're the person who's like, that's not my job, that's not for me to figure out, then you're gonna be lost in your entrepreneurship journey because you're gonna have to figure out things and you can't always rely on other people to do it. When you're on a job, you kind of have a cushion. There are people designated to do some things. And even though sometimes people may not always do their job or show up the way they need to, there's an expectation that somebody else should or can do it. But a lot of times on your entrepreneurship journey, you may not be able to afford to have someone problem solve for you. So you gotta be the one to stand up and step up for your business. And you gotta make decisions sometimes on the fly and you gotta be able to move and be nimble in that. So if you're sitting there waiting for someone to come save you, if you're sitting there waiting for someone to give you the answer to something, a lot of times it doesn't work like that. And if you want the answer or you want a problem solved, it's more than likely gonna cost money. And a lot of times when you're building a business in the beginning, you don't have money to spare. So you have to be the person to figure out what to do, how to make a change, how to pivot, how to address the things that come up every single day in your business. And if you're the type of person that's like, oh, I'm tired of having to be the one to have to have all the answers, that's what you're gonna be as an entrepreneur. And even as you grow and you may have a business that has employees, People are going to look to you because you are the leader. So if you're that type of person who's like, I don't want to have all the answers. I just want to do a job. I just, I know what I'm supposed to do and I just want to do that. Then entrepreneurship may not be for you. 
The fourth thing you should think about is whether or not you're ready to work harder than you've ever worked before. So there are some people who are employees who are really, really good employees. They do work, they come in early, they leave later, right? They are really good stellar employees. And that may translate to a bonus or it may translate into more money, but it's not always expected or you can get away with not having to do all of that, with not having to work hard. But on the flip side, as an entrepreneur, the harder you work, the more success you're likely to see, especially if you're focusing on the right things, right? If you're putting your work and your efforts into the things that are actually gonna move your business forward instead of just doing busy work. But as an entrepreneur, you're gonna work harder than you've ever worked before. So you're gonna to have to work weekends, you're gonna to have to work late nights, you're gonna to have to forsake time with your family, forsake time with your loved ones, your relationships will suffer, your time will suffer, you will lose social time, so you will forget what it's like to go out sometimes because you are just trained to work on your business. And I found this especially in COVID because people could not go out, they had a lot of time to work on business or to work on their side hustles. But now that the world is opening back up again, it's really hard to balance when you're used to just constantly working, but you also need some downtime and you need that social time. And the reality is when you're building a business or just running a business period, you have to work hard. And a lot of times it's not acknowledged by anybody. And it's really not acknowledged by anybody because you're the one doing everything. But also, I don't think people know how hard it is to have your own business. I think we glamorize it a little bit in our culture where it's like, oh, they got their own business. They doing it. They got business cards. They got a logo. They got a cute name. But I don't think people really understand how hard it is to run a business because you have to do every single aspect of your business business. You have to do the customer support. You have to do the administrative back end pieces. You have to actually produce the services and do the work. You have to do the marketing to get customers. You got to do the aftercare, like having relationships with people after they engage with you. You have to do reporting and strategic planning to figure out where to go next. All of that is on you. And a lot of times, as you know established businesses they have staff to do that but when you're an entrepreneur and you're building your business it's just you so you absolutely have to work hard and if you are not willing to work hard without any gratification without somebody acknowledging it entrepreneurship may not be for you because it's exhausting and it can be thankless and a lot of people may not understand you may be like oh i figured out how to do my email funnel or my conversion rate went up and people who are not business owners or entrepreneurs around you may be like, what are you talking about, right? So <laughs> if you're the kind of person who needs that validation, then it may not be the right fit for you to be an entrepreneur because there are gonna be many nights that people just don't realize and don't notice how hard you work. And finally, this is the fifth consideration you should think about. How well can you ride through highs and lows? So as an entrepreneur, you're gonna have some really great highs and you're gonna have some really, really discouraging lows. And those lows especially may make you feel like giving up. But the thing about entrepreneurship is you cannot stop. If you're a full-time entrepreneur, you have to rely on yourself. So you can't afford to get stuck in depression or you can't afford to get stuck in pity if something doesn't go well or if something you launched didn't happen the way you wanted it to, you can't stop because when you stop any momentum that stops, you stop your cash flow. But as an employee, you may have a low on the job where you don't do good on a project or you're just not feeling the people you're working with, but you still have a cushion. There's still a general expectation that you will get paid. And even if you don't stay on that job, whatever other job you get, there's an expectation that you still have that cushion of getting paid. So. Even if you're struggling a little bit, you're covered. Some of that is covered. Some of that is not seen on a job side. Whereas with entrepreneurship, where you're lacking, it gets exposed. It gets exposed and you can really put yourself at risk if you stop. So if you're the kind of person who cannot wade through those highs and lows, if you cannot 
maintain through that and it becomes very difficult for you to ride out a wave, then you may wanna consider whether or not full-time entrepreneurship is for you because there are gonna be some moments where you're gonna feel on top of the world where you're like, yes, this is amazing. I can't believe this is happening. And then the next day you still gotta make payroll. And then the next day you still have to figure out where money is coming the next month or the next year. And if you're not built like that, if you're not built for that kind of pressure, then you may wanna consider just staying as an employee to have more structure and to have more stability. So have I thoroughly scared you out of entrepreneurship? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Honestly, I didn't do this to deter people. I just like to do videos that show the real side of launching, whether it's me talking about nonprofits, whether it's me talking about my experience in having my own business. I just like to be real. I like to have real expectations so that if you want to go into this, you're not blindsided. No matter what happens, at least you knew what to expect. That's why I do these videos, so you can be better prepared, all right? So if you need help from me, if you wanna contact me for a consultation as you're trying to navigate your startup process, whether you're a nonprofit or doing a for-profit venture, you can contact me using the contact information below. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you're curious about how to start a nonprofit, because I do a lot of videos on nonprofits, you can also visit me at bossinabudget.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.